Welcome to the Homeschool Together podcast. Where one working mom and a stay-at-home dad help you navigate the nuts and bolts of the growing and dynamic world of homeschooling. With a focus on early learners. Like me! All the ins and outs of building and maintaining your homeschool life. Homeschool! Find out tips and tricks to make things like this easier. I'm reading! And ultimately, enjoy educating your kids. And what's that last thing? Have fun together! Did I do good, Daddy? (laughs) Yeah, you did, sweetie. Good job. Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together. Thanks so much for joining us. If you have a chance, share this podcast with a friend and tell (laughs) tell another family. If you know somebody who's starting to homeschool um, or if you're at a homeschooling group and and you know somebody likes to listen to podcasts, maybe they like to listen to ours. So feel free to share um, with your friends. Yeah, let's get the word out. Absolutely. So today we are talking about morning routines. And Mm -hmm. I know for a fact as, as a an avid uh, watcher of YouTubes and a lot of uh, uh, movers and shakers and people who who are influencers and stuff. You always see the the videos on people's morning routine and what you know. What do they do for a morning routine? Or what does this famous person or this wealthy person or this CEO? What do they do for the morning routine? Or um, there's a lot of people out there who said I did. You know Neil Gaiman's morning writing routine for 30 <laughs> days and this is what happened. And you know what, those. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic clickbaity art uh, titles, and and I, I have to admit I, I I get sucked into them every single time. <laughs> I, you know, it, we should talk after about cold baths, you know, cold dips, you know, and, and hot tubs and 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 saunas. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm totally into it now. What? Cold cold plunges. That's the new thing. Jeez, YouTube. I think it has like an algorithm into your brain. It does. It does. Especially, I don't even, I don't even know where you come from. I'm yeah. giving. You should see the look I'm giving him right now. Like <laughs> I don't even know, guys. So uh, the thing about morning routines and the reason we wanted to talk about it, we we did an episode a couple of weeks ago yeah. about getting back in the groove yep. after you've had a break. And one of the things that helps us get back in the groove the fastest is the fact that we have a solid morning routine mm-hmm. that we can rely on. And we thought we would we would share it with you all and give you some other ideas to think about yep. when you're setting up your own morning routine. Um, now, obviously, this is going to change as your kids get older, and you know maybe you've got a, a you know a toddler mm-hmm. when that that toddler is five. I mean, that's a totally different morning routine, right? But yeah. Just some things to think about and wanted to give you a glimpse into our morning routine. One of the things for us is that um, we like to set ourselves up for success. I'm always trying to do that at work. We're trying to do that at home in our homeschool. And I feel like, you know, if you get up in the morning and you start off well, you set up your whole day yeah. for success. It feels that way. Yeah. I'm not saying it does not devolve into chaos around nap time. Don't I mean, <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. But no. um, I think there's something to be said for it. And we thought we would talk a little bit about that with you all and, and what we do and give you some thoughts about some ideas about it. Yeah, sort of like the mindset of like, you know, your favorite sports team or your, you know, you know, some TV show or something of that nature, they don't just wing it when they go into these things. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like they don't wing it like when they hop into a podcast five minutes and read the notes. No, never mind. We, <laughs> we'd never wing it on our podcast. We would never wing we'd it. We'd never wing it. Not that we have a child with 104 temp today and <laughs> yes. we've kind of been running around a little bit crazy. I, I got puked on at least uh, once today. Once, yeah. 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 So, so morning routine. Only did. once, though. Hey, you know, I think that's success, man. If you've only been puked on once in a day, you're winning. <laughs> you're, you're living the life. You're, right you're, living, you're the life. living the life. So, yeah. So, yeah, let's, let's yeah, talk about it. Yeah, so like, the, why? Yeah. Why Why have a morning routine? Like, so, what's the solid part of that? So, for me, I've always looked at um, owning the morning or owning your the structure of your day, at least in the beginning of the day. Um, there's always this line I got from from a podcast where I listen to um, the discipline equals freedom. That if you can control the discipline of the morning, you have the freedom to make the choices you want, right? As opposed to letting life just kind of wash over you like a tide, right? And then you have to deal and manage and, and, and adapt. If you can have the discipline of controlling what happens in the day, therefore you are making the decisions and you have the freedom to set the day however you want. So I've always looked at the morning routine as kind of that centerpiece, that beginning of the day, that that where you can set it on your on the you know the right trajectory, and and you you alluded to it um, that the success or the preparation um, is you know a vast majority of the beginning of that right, um, and we also know that kids thrive on structure. So if you can set 
the di- you know what your day is going to look like, or at least in the morning, the kids can start off on the right foot. That's something predictable, something that they know is coming. They know what to expect. Exactly. I think that's a really important part. Now, all of this, and 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 let's just like you know put a, a, a rainbow across the, this entire the, episode. This the is the brinch a, truck of caveats. This coming is in. your yeah. mileage Throat may cleared. vary yeah, <laughs> on cleared. this entire episode, right? Because everybody's families are totally different, and some people they love having a very loose morning where everybody gets to fully yeah. wake up and, and totally get in gear and they homeschool in the afternoon and, and you know how their morning goes, that's their, that's their free form time. Yeah. Right. So like, we're not saying that you have to do this, but we have found, and it, and it doesn't mean that you have to, you know, um, schedule to the five minute interval. No. And, right? and, yeah. and we'll talk with you about what we do for our morning routine. Yeah. Um, and you can see that it's it's not super rigid, but just know that you know everyone's families look different. We found that our kids really thrive on this structure, mm-hmm. and if you think that your kids might thrive on it, then this is for you. But if not, you know, like this is a your mileage may vary. <laughs> and, and within that structure, you know, keying in on that idea is the idea of doing something that is you know almost guaranteed to be successful. You know. R- r- the repeatability, something that is realistic, you know, well, like you I mean, had brought guaranteed up a, to be successful. I think that's really hard. I think not, not I think, guaranteed, but, but, but set it up so that the, there's the highest probability of success. Well, and you talked about it like right before we started is the idea of the crash diet, right? You always rebound off. The exactly. Crash diet. And, and so I think, I think what you mean with that, like, um, you know, that it's always going to be successful is that you are always going to be able to do the routine. Exactly. How your kids react to it, that's a totally unpredictable thing. You don't thing. want to do cold plunges in the morning? Yeah, yeah. Me? That's a, that's a totally unpredictable <laughs> thing. And uh, the kids may wake up in a grump and whatever. <laughs> what we're talking about is when you set up your morning routine, you want to set up something that is repeatable for you every day. Like if we set up a morning routine that was all about me waking up at 5 a.m. and cooking a gourmet breakfast for my kids and doing all this stuff, that would not be... That sounds wonderful. Let's do that one. Right. That would not be a repeatable and realistic morning routine for me. So when we talk about like guaranteeing success, it means guaranteeing that I can do the steps that I've set up. Whatever routine you make, make it something you really can do and isn't what you think in a perfect world you'd love to do every morning. I, I feel like this I, I'm is... I'm always... But I'm always... A, you know, if, if you have some goal of what type of person you want to be in the morning, you know, you can work towards that through small incremental habits. You sure can. But a lot of times you're jumping the bridge too, too exactly. much. Exactly. I liken this to the to the juicer. I'm going to digress. I bought a juicer <laughs> and I, I had this juicer and I made like juiced carrot, orange, whatever, like twice. And that was it. And finally, years later, we gave it away to Goodwill. <laughs> And the thing is, you said at that time, I don't think you're a person who likes a juicer. I think you're a person who wants to be the person that likes a juicer. (laughs) And that's the thing. And so I think we see like these, you know, Pinterest and YouTube perfect homeschool families where everything is all organized and they use that the little bento boxes and everything looks like (laughs) immaculate and amazing. And I want to be that person, but I have to be realistic that I'm actually not that person. So yeah. don't, like you say, don't jump. I mean, yeah. take small steps. You maybe buy a bento box, but you don't have to like <laughs> cut things into origami, you know, these perfect Perfectly. little sandwich shapes and yeah. stuff. I've seen some like crazy lunch art. Don't yeah. get me started. And, and, and that really, that like that keys into the, the type of person you are. Like if you're already exactly. doing that type of stuff, then okay, fine. That That's not a big leap for you. But if right. you're a, you know take an hour to wake up type of person and you're slow to rise in the morning or maybe you need your coffee or your diet coke before you get rolling you know maybe you're not that type of person who does bento yeah, boxes don't set yourself up for exactly. food art <laughs> you're almost in, in some respect if you don't take you know take the right right steps in the morning with who you are you're setting yourself up not for success but for failure right, right? this and is then, all and then then you start to you know you you start to criticize yourself against mm-hmm. the ideal, and that's that's not I don't think a uh, a good way to go. And that's true with not just morning routines, but e- for anything like homeschooling or right. um, you know any activities that you're doing. If you're setting yourself up too too high of an ideal or too high of an expectations, you may find yourself criticizing yourself if you do fall right. short. And that's just so detrimental. Let's yeah. not do that. Exactly. This is all about setting an expectation for yourself, for your spouse, yep. for your kids about what we're gonna do in the morning. Just make that. Our our soapboxes make that expectation realistic for you, yeah. and don't do something that you just know you're not going to be able to do. And the expectations term. are twofold: something that is attainable, but also um, something that is uh, 
uh, realistic that you can obtain, you know, that not that it's just obtainable, but that is it's set in stone that's repeatable, that yeah, you can do it over repeatable. and over again. Yeah. It's not requiring some outside presence or third party to, right. to make your morning perfect. Right. If I don't have an hour the night before to prep my morning routine shot, that's not going to Yeah, exactly. Um, next thing is, is the idea of empowering your children. And I know a lot of us homeschoolers were, you know, we want our kids to be able to dress themselves and brush their be teeth. Independent. And, you know, be able, be, begin to cultivate like, you know, homeschooling, you know, responsible farmers. Mm-hmm. We're cultivating children who have independence, right. right? And in order to do that, we need to allow them to have that opportunity yes, to fail and succeed. they are strong, capable children. And this is about, you know, part of your morning routine isn't just what you do. Mm-hmm. It's what your kids do, and they play a part in that. Yep. And we'll give you some examples of the way that our kids play a part in our morning routine. But there's a part for you to play. There's maybe a part for your spouse. There's a part for your yeah. kids to play all in this routine. This isn't about here's all the prep work that mom is, or dad is going to do in the morning for everybody yeah. else. That's like not the goal. Yeah, and, and the funny thing is with the empowerment is, you know, <laughs> we, we see it all the time that the bus arrives on, I think, on our street at like 730. And, and a lot of times our kids aren't even out of their bedrooms by, by right. that, or they're, or they're cuddling in bed with you. Right. Right. And you know, that we are, we are very lucky that we don't have to have a very early morning deadline where we are forcing everybody to get out. We would a be lot terrible of, at that. Y'all would we would be a be lot of really, really, uh, we I would, would be late all the time. We'd be late. I'd be driving those kids to school every day because we would be late. Yes. <laughs> we would never make the bus. And so, so we do have a little bit of grace built into our our morning schedules, you know, like we'll talk a little bit about, you know, some of the, we do have some time sensitive stuff that we have in the morning uh, with our parent partnership. Um, And you may have that with your co-op or you may have that with play dates or something of that nature. You may have some get togethers that are early in the morning, but beginning to to cultivate some, you know, independence can help get you moving faster in the morning as opposed to you running into the room, throwing clothes on kids and, and pushing them out the door. Now, this is also something that your routine needs to be something that can be flexible. It can flex yeah. that, you know, obviously, um, you know, we are homeschoolers. And one of the things that I like is that we don't have to be kept to a, a rigid schedule. So yep. let's not keep ourselves to a rigid exactly. schedule, right? Make a routine that can flex with your family. And it, it, may gotta, flex, it may flex through the year, right? You may. Absolutely. In the in the summer, it may be one thing. When it's chilly in the winter, it may be something different. Yeah. If you live on property and you've got to take care of animals and yeah. things, your morning routine is going to be, could be very different through different parts of the year. We also have to remember that we can't beat ourselves up when it doesn't go to plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you've got a sick kid or you've got an early meeting you've got to get to. There's things that disrupt Sp- it. A spouse was late or just coming in from a travel or something of that nature. Right. Yeah. Let's let's build in some flexibility for ourselves. So those are kind of some just overarching thoughts. And we're going to then uh, dive into what our routine looks like. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of see. And then we'll, we'll follow up with some thoughts and some tips and things that you might want to put into your routine um, mm-hmm. that, that you might want to think about. Yeah. So the first thing w- with respect to the way I approach my morning routine is actually I approach it the night before. So and I think that this is probably something that everyone should think about. Your morning routine doesn't actually start in the morning. It starts in the evening. It starts the night before. And even if that night before isn't actually something that you physically are doing, mm-hmm. it's something that you are mentally doing going, okay, in the morning, I know that this is what's coming up. Maybe that means it's setting your alarm yeah. or that means you've got to put something out or do some of the other prep, or maybe it's just mentally preparing for, yeah, what okay, do I have to do sometimes I just sit there, I close my eyes for five minutes. And I just think about this is what tomorrow is going to look like for me. Yeah. And I just run through it and I feel much more prepared in the morning. So, so morning routine really starts the night before and, and and the reason why that is is because a lot of times the success for my morning routine if i don't have to you know chase kids or you know worry about you know is is the three-year-old over there tearing something apart or whatnot if i can focus in a quiet space and i know between that moment and when the kids wake up nobody's going to be touching anything i can stage things almost like a like the mise en place of my morning mm-hmm. can be can be all ready for me that's right um, so the basically my night starts when the when the when i put the little one down you get the big one i get the little one um, yep, we read bedtime stories, bedtime we do stories. cuddles, and hugs, I t- kisses. And the first thing I do when I walk out, right before I say I love you, good night, I, I take breakfast orders. So I first thing because I because the you know why the the big one she's she's willing, but the little one is not. She has a, a, an idea in her mind about what that breakfast order is going to be, and if it's something different, she's she's mad in the morning. She's, yeah, she's <laughs> she's got a list of things, and and the thing is that if that order comes in, you know, 
if, if I don't have something or if I don't take the order or if I don't figure it out, she, you're right. She does have a little bit. She comes bit, in in the morning and she's like, mommy, I'm not this happy. morning I this want granola and, and I want yogurt, yogurt with an egg. And she like has a whole thing. Yeah. And sometimes it's just, I want cereal with milk. It's not like it's complex. It's just, she's very yeah, convinced it could just about be what cereal. she wants. She'd be like, daddy, I like oatmeal tomorrow morning. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, it's not like we're preparing gourmet meals. Yeah. She just, she's very particular about what she would like to eat the next and day. And so, so that's the first thing I take is <laughs> I take the breakfast order and the big one doesn't care. She's basically eating what her sister, her, her little sister Right. Wants. And I think this is because the three-year-old doesn't like to eat dinner yes. very much. She's really so she's a breakfast and food, lunch kid. So I think she's hungry when she goes to <laughs> yes. bed. And so the mo- in the morning she wakes up ravenous and she only has eyes for whatever <laughs> she wanted. Anyways, we so, digress. Yeah. No, so I come right downstairs and it's like it's oatmeal. Fine. I pull out two bowls, two spoons. I pull out the, um, the the measuring cup. I pull out the two packets of oatmeal. I pull out the extra. I, I always like put a little bit of extra oatmeal into it, and I have that all staged right in the kitchen, right where breakfast would begin, and it's all pulled out and ready to go. So like, if I wake up in the morning and it's not even on the front of my mind, oh god, I gotta make them food. Well, and you're like, oh, I don't remember, I don't remember what she wanted. And I come right out, and it's all sitting there for me, ready to go. Now, like, I, I don't pull the milk out, obviously, but I have every little piece yeah. sitting out, and. You know, even if it's like, oh, they like a little cinnamon in there, I will pull the cinnamon out and I will put it right there. And so everything is ready for breakfast in the right, morning. Right, which takes you 30 seconds. I mean, yeah. you literally pull everything, you set it down. It's yeah. easy. Me prepping for the morning at night, less than 10 minutes because I've got it all down, right? We, we know well, right. everything you, is. So you, you, do all the, you do all the breakfast stuff yep. first. And then what I do is I pull, I, I think about like, what is my, what is the day coming up tomorrow? Is it a parent partnership day? Or is it a open day, well, you know, a day where we don't have any parent partnership? And that really determines, you know, how, um, what, what I pull together. But for the most part, I'm pulling out all my homeschool subjects. I will go and get my core subjects, my reading, my math. With my reading and math, I also have supplemental books. And I decide, okay, do I do a little bit extra math tomorrow? Or do I want to do a little bit extra reading tomorrow? If so, what is that? I pull it out and I stage it. I also get pencils, like a little mechanical pencils, and I get them ready. I put them in the books so that we are ready to go. Um, I then also get backpacks. If it's a you know parent partnership day, I pull out the backpacks for the, that day. I stage snacks. I stage water bottles, not filled, but just I put the water bottles out. Because in, in the reason we're doing this is self-preservation, yeah, this you is guys, really, because yeah. in the morning when we're rushing to the parent partnership, because yeah. we're late for everything. We're one of those chronically late families. Not like, I, I, not I, like, I, like um, say, I show up right on time. Like, or two minutes late. Two minutes I late. mean, we're just right there, right? We're always rushing. And so yeah. we do this so that we don't have to try to go, where'd your backpack go? Yeah. You know, where's your water bottle? Or worse, we just forget the water bottle and then they go to, to school without one. Yeah. And then that's a problem. So yeah. this is a self-preservation move. And, and, and what's what's great about it too is, is that I get to, you know, like for example, if I have right start math stuff, I can go upstairs, I can get the sheets for that day, you know, whatever sheets we need or whatever materials we need. Oh, I need the protractor today or I need a, I need a ruler or I need the abacus, whatever it is. Oh, we're doing the, uh, you know, all about reading. Great. I need to go get the new binders of sheets of whatever activity we're going to do. I need to get the letter tiles and then get all that staged. Um, if it is in her backpack, um, I'm getting, making sure that all her, her, you know, her paperwork or her, her notebooks that, you know, maybe she was doodling are all put into the bag. Everything is zipped up. Snacks are slipped into the bags as well. Um, because I know both of them will need snacks, whether I pick them up from preschool or whether, whether I get them at, you know, their second class at the parent partnership. I want to make sure she has a Everybody's snack. Everybody's always hungry and Everybody, they always want snacks. Everybody is always hungry. These children, it's wild. Like I could look at them 10 minutes after eating breakfast and they were like, is this snack time yet? I'm like, gosh, kids, you know, just eat a little bit more or something <laughs> like that. I don't know. So basically I get all that pulled together. And for me, that kind of sets it sets me right. So I, I know what lessons I'm teaching the next day. I know what things I've got to cover. Sometimes I'm looking and saying, okay, okay, today we are doing subtraction work or today we are doing geometry work in math or right start math is about the double E words. Like we're just covering double E. We're halfway through the level two right now. Additionally, I will go to our wall of books for our um, our, our prehistory study and I will be pulling books out and I will be staging those as well. Like, okay, today is a, you know, parent partnership day. I'm going to do less of the prehistory work, but I'm going to read these two books. Maybe I'll do it at, at breakfast and I'll stage them. I'll open them to their pages, um, to make sure that I don't have to hunt and, and look for them because you know, in the morning it's yep. very busy throw and everything. In a bookmark. I throw in a bookmark, boom, it's ready to go. 
clean off the table. Maybe I'll put them on on the kitchen table so that they're right there, ready. Yeah, ready yeah. To we go. we try to st- stage everything in our kitchen, so you've yeah. got the stuff for breakfast. The backpacks are right there with the water bottles and the snacks, and the books are on the kitchen table where you do the morning homeschooling. Yep, and this is you know any any morning basket stuff that you may have. This is a good time to pull out as well. Mm-hmm. Get that stage. I also am now starting to stage the three year old stuff with the with the blossom and root. Uh, volume, but this is very fast. Too. I mean, this is really again, yeah. Considering, and you know why it's fast is because you've just done this today, right? Like so, yep. so I you well, just, you saw it right like on the days you're you're home from work, you see what I I prep. Right? Oh, exactly. Well, no, I just mean that you just did AAR. You just did all about reading and write start math yeah. today. Oh, yeah. So it's not like you're having to go and pull it from somewhere else. So on a Sunday night, maybe this takes a few extra minutes because you've been off for a couple of days. Yeah. But the rest of it's like we just did this today. You know yeah. what the next page is. It doesn't take you a lot of time to figure out. Yeah, it's not, and and you know the parents out there. I mean, yeah, you're cranking through your curriculum, and you, you you're right. You know what you're covering. Yeah, the next it's day not or, like you're picking it up after a long time. Or away. even if it is a new subject or a new you know vowel pairing or something of that nature, and all about reading, you're like, well, it's all like what we did yesterday. So it's not like anything so foreign that I couldn't understand what, what, what right. To, what and it is and the night before you're, you're really bookmarking, but you're not pre, you're not pre reading the section I'm to get ready make, to, to, I'm just making sure I have the materials I need for right. that, that lesson. Because in the morning when they're eating, that's a good time when you can like pre read the lesson and make sure you like understand all of exactly. it before you teach it. This is just like, I know what page number I'm on yeah, and the books are available because I don't know why the books seem to walk away from when we do them, when you do stuff towards the morning, by the time the evening comes around, those books could be anywhere. So this is that time where it's, you know, getting things back. Absolutely. They should all be in the crate, but they're never all in the crate. No, they're never in the crate. (laughs) Um, And then on top of that, some days, like on like certain days, I have to bring a lunch as well. I have to have the kids eat on the go. And so that is when I make the lunches. So I'll prep my little bento box or whatever it is, but it's not a bento it's box. It's never y'all. that sufficated. It's literally it's like a, a peanut Tupperware butter jelly sandwich. with like a, a sandwich and a bag of chips in it. Yeah. And you know, some, some peanut, granola bar, yeah, and, granola bar and some fruit leathers or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And a, and a, and a juice box. And, and at the same time, once I have prepped all of their stuff for the next day, I've prepped my bags. A lot of times when, when I'm going to the parent partnership or, you know, if I'm having to go out on the, uh, eat lunch with them, I'm prepping my own stuff as well. I'm getting my bag together. I'm making sure my laptop is charged so that I can do some writing. I'm making sure I have my Kindle in, in my bag. I'm making sure I have a water bottle. I'm mm-hmm. getting my, you know, my 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 protein shake ready and putting that in the fridge next to their lunches. All their lunches are in a paper bag so that I don't forget my lunch if I grab their lunches. Just making sure I'm just being very thoughtful to make sure that... This every- sounds like a lot of prep, but really, he does it every day. So most everything is kind of, you know, your bag is ready to go. Really what my, you're my doing... My bag is sitting right there. My laptop is sitting right to my right. You know, right. Your laptop is charged. You're just plugged in charging. Like yeah. most of the time, because you're doing it every day, yeah. things, most things is just like a, a confirmation. Yeah, that's where I needed it to be still there. And Not what, like what, what the you're great, hunting it down. Yeah, what the great thing too is, is that when you're building your morning routine and you're building where everything is... We, we have staged things in places that I know I can go and get them. Like my, okay, my backpack's in the office. The kids' bags are in the, in the cubbies on, you know, on, on the, in the play area. Um, you know, my, the, you know, obviously my water bottles are in, in that one drawer and, and we've just staged everything in the right spot so that I don't have to think about it. I just go, okay, I gotta get lunch. I gotta get my bag ready. I gotta get all these things ready. Right. Now we can go ahead and move forward. Um, Last thing is I double check my schedule. You know, we say, oh, are any classes? Do we have a doctor's appointment? Yeah, I, I send emails now, with parents that I might be share, ride sharing with. But that's the thing that you do after I've put the little, after I put the big one to bed, you've yeah. done your other individual prep. Then yep. I come downstairs and you say, what's going on tomorrow? Is there anything special that we, I we not? Kinda, we kind of, we kind of We have to communicate like, is a, there something a, going on? As a couple, like, yeah, are, are you late tomorrow? Are you short? You know, are you coming home What early? are we doing for dinner? Do what I need to go for, to the store? Do I need to pull something out for dinner? Like we're already staging our, you know what we're doing for that day i'm also pulling out my lunch for the next day if i am like home or something like that i'm pulling that out of the freezer if i have meal prepped for myself and i'm putting that there and i'm getting that ready as well Mm -hmm. all these little things that we're just thinking so that when the day starts we don't we don't have any confusion we're all on the same page well right and part of this and you could do this in many ways right you could do this prep in the morning while your kids are eating breakfast one of the things that we choose you choose to do this at night is because in the morning you kind of want to be on autopilot until you fully wake up and being able to be on autopilot means that the breakfast stuff is all staged the kids bags are all ready the curriculum is out so you can come down you can basically blearily make them breakfast Take care get, of the dog and all take that Take care stuff, of yeah. the dog, get them eating, and then you can 
read the news, slowly wake up, yep. and you don't have to worry about getting all this rushing around and getting yeah. this stuff together. So you definitely don't have to do it the night before all of this, but for us, this is the right way I, I for, found for to, you to be able to take a, sl- a slow morning for yourself. Well, especially since we have synced up both kids' schedules, um, that the little one is having preschool on the same day as the parent partnership days for the most part, um, that has proven to be a more busy day. And that and that has forced me to begin to do this type of routine because it's it's almost necessary for us to be successful and not be like, Where's your backpack? Where are your shoes? Well, one thing is yeah. on those days when we have preschool, we've got to leave pretty early pretty in the morning, early. me and the little one, and yeah. you you and the big one stay. And so um, that means that, you know, we definitely have to get breakfast done mm-hmm. and it, it, we're know, a little get bit backpacks more done. Under a little bit more of a time crunch. We're so, always late to preschool. So the so. so last thing I do at the end of the night, as, as we sync up, I check the weather and I'd send those text messages if I am doing a ride share or if somebody, if I'm having to watch a, a child at school or something of that nature. I make sure I sync up with the people that I'm, you know, outside of the house that I'm interacting with. And so I sync that up and then boom, we're, we're ready to go. And I, you know, we can enjoy the rest of our night. Right. And again, all of this less than 10 to 15 minutes. Right. Literally, you did this tonight before we started the podcast and it took you less than 10 minutes yeah, it, to do all of it. It doesn't take a lot of time. So it's not, it's not a big commitment. It sounds like a lot. I'm sure people are like, oh my gosh, this is yeah. way too organized. Well, I wouldn't The know. thing is, is I'm repeating a lot of the things that I just, okay, I just do it on almost... I don't even think about half these things. I just do them, right? They're all right. they're so ingrained in. Well, and this start this is an evolution, right? This is yeah. the point the point that we're at right now. When you first started, you just grabbed their backpacks. You didn't yeah. do breakfast prep, and then you found that in the morning you would get up a little bit of friction on the you breakfast. would make something, and then the little one wouldn't eat it because that wasn't well, what she, she had in her mind. Yeah, and not that it has to be perfect and exactly what she wants every day, but it's just kind of too early to fight with a child, you know? <laughs> yeah. so, Which hill are you going to die on? <laughs> right. And it's not, it's not like she's asking for anything hard. She's just some morning. She really wants cereal. Another she morning, wants an she ego with a uh, yogurt. Really yeah. wants an ego and yogurt. I mean, she just has yeah. some specific things. Yeah. So, um, so, so that's the, you know, e- but yeah. I'm, I just wanted to just say that yeah. this has evolved. This didn't start. And, and it's going to change this way. It's going to change next year. It 100%. Will. I know it. So then in the morning, we have two types of mornings. We have the parent partnership morning and then we have our regular what i call is a free day so on a parent partnership day basically for me i about half the time can get my butt out of bed and go do my workout before um that's dedication man i can't do that the last couple weeks have been a little difficult because obviously you know we talked about we've had a little bit of a disruption but i've been trying to get my workout done in in that early morning and then i come in and i prep the breakfast for the kids i take care of the furry kid um, you know, send her outside, get her fed, you know, like I'm feeding three people, right? It's not just mm-hmm. the two, it's the three, right? Um, then I can get upstairs and shower because they're eating, right? And then I can, when I come back down, I load up any bikes or scooters that I might be taking that day. Like, oh, hey, we're going to go do a play date or, hey, we're all going to the school today. So I need, you know, my little one likes, I call her a hot rod. So she likes to scoot around or ride her bike and stuff like that. So I, I always take those things. I get those things loaded in the car. Some mornings, because you take the little one to preschool, thank you for that. I appreciate that because otherwise we'd be getting out really early and mm-hmm. that would be it's really- It's on my way to work, so it works It's on our way, yeah. Um, so some mornings I have like 10, 15, 20 minutes of free time with the big kid. And I really take advantage of that little bit of time before I know we have to leave. Okay, you got to walk out the door at you know 8.40 and it's you know 8.15. And I can get a little bit of homeschooling done there. And a lot of times I don't do like really hard homeschooling. I do a lot of the review stuff. Like I have my Kumon. Things addition- from the morning basket. Yeah, morning basket stuff. I got my Kumon, you know, addition and subtraction problems. And she can just crank through, you know, a dozen problems. And a lot of times what we'll do is you'll set those right next to where she, her, her spot at the breakfast table. So she's so that- eating and then she can do them at yeah, the same time. Yeah, she just starts doing them. Absolutely. Um, and then I marshal the kids and I leave. And it, it, that's on my parent partnership day. I'd like to say for my part of this morning routine, my part of the morning routine is that I you lay in bed. Your, you sit on your butt. And I get to cuddle with the kids yes. until you call them for breakfast. Yep. And so I want to say that there's there's a, a fe- this is a feature, not a bug, yes. in that the kids aren't storming downstairs. But you also get a little bit of that 
that because you're at work I, I am I know that's, I, a, that's a connecting time I get you. all the connecting all I get all the feels but also the kids aren't like running downstairs getting into everything the other day oh they tried they tried to get into breakfast and it was an absolute mess everywhere well, they made their own breakfast and we came down and there was milk and cereal everywhere so instead <laughs> they're cuddling with me until you're telling them that either you have breakfast or if it's a cereal day yeah. they can make breakfast for themselves but you'll be there to make sure that it doesn't go horribly wrong like last time um when they wanted to make themselves breakfast so absolutely yeah they do make they do make uh, they make themselves egos and they do yeah. make themselves cereal and they help with the oatmeal they help put it in the microwave but it's nice to have a little bit of supervision because it can go pear-shaped with a three three and a half year old so that's absolutely. my time in the morning where i get to connect with the kids and so if you're the stay-at-home parent and you've got a spouse who's you know out and working too you know, if you can take advantage of that time, that's a time when my kids and I talk a lot about what mm-hmm. they're going to do for the day. I help mentally prep my daughters for what's going to happen, especially my older one. She's starting to get... You're, you're the be nice to daddy propaganda, you know, channel. Right. I am. I'm always like, hey, look, you guys, this is what's going on today. I really want you to have good behavior for daddy. Remember that there's a special play date to look forward to. And our seven-year-old's dealing with... Um, she's starting to get a little bit anxious about something. So this is a time when I talk her through through Mm -hmm. maybe something that's going on maybe she's got um, an activity later and she might be a little bit nervous about that we talk it through and I get her prepped for the day I make sure that um, from an emotional level both of the girls are starting out having a really good day so that's my part of the routine so it may feel like I'm just cuddling in bed for 30 minutes but it's an important point because I think that that helps kind of set them up for the day because without that and I was I've been gone several days dealing with Mm -hmm. this death in the family and you've had to kind of like you're feeding them breakfast but you're also mentally talking them through the day and going through okay here's what's going on today girls and how do you feel about it are we all good to go and and I'm you know me I'm more of a tough love is it bleeding no you're fine well yeah and so it's kind of it's kind of nice though because this gives us both a chance and this gives me some great connection time with the kids exactly Exactly, exactly. So what we talked about was the parent partnership day. I have a different day on the Monday, Wednesday, Fridays when I don't have anything going on. We call that our free day. Um, Same, basically same, same thing happens. But, um, you know, the first thing I like to do is I like to sync my podcast and make sure you do too as as you get your new homeschool together podcast. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Make sure you subscribe and tell a friend. Um, uh, (laughs) So the first thing I do is basically I go, I try to get my workout in. And again, I go down and I do the breakfast and everything. And once they're doing breakfast, I ask my oldest, I go, what do you want to do first today? Reading or math? And because that's obviously those are the two big things. Obviously we're doing the prehistory thing and we got other things going on, but those are the big ones. I'm like, okay, what do you want to hit today first? Reading or math? And that basically, so she gets the choice of what she wants to do. Mm -hmm. That also tells me how I'm going to run and manage. And as I like to say, edutain, um, my three-year-old, right? So if she says, okay, I want to do reading, I go, great. That means the little one is getting Khan Academy kids and the headphones. So I go and get the tablet. Right, because we can't make any noise while the reading is it's a very, struggle for our older daughter. It's very sensitive. It's the only way I can do it with them in the same room, you know, basically at the kitchen table. Um, you know, if she does math, I go, great. I'm going to get some painting stuff together, get some Play-Doh, get some, you know, scissors and some glue and some, you know, markers and paper for her to play with while we're doing our math work. So based on what she, my, my, my oldest has asked, I have to make a pivot on what I, what I, what I do. Right. And so that helps you prep. But while, but after they finish breakfast on a free day, the first thing that we have them do before you actually jump into the homeschool is you've asked them what they want to do. Now it's time for them to do their chores. Yes. So the big one, she empties the dishwasher and she puts everything away. And then the little one has to clean up all the shoes and take all of the socks and take them upstairs to the laundry room because we I don't know about you, socks like but crazy. the dirty socks just get thrown on the floor with the shoes. So that's the little one's job. And She's got to tidy all of that. And in then the morning. once that's done, they get dressed and they go brush their teeth and do all that fun and do stuff. Their hair. While that is happening, it gives me a little bit of time to go ahead and from the stack of materials that I have set mm-hmm. up the night before, I can now begin to bring them out and set them onto the table and right. begin to, you know, actually read the lesson and understand what I got to do so that when she comes downstairs, Boom, we can go right into it and we can be successful. Right. And on those parent partnership days, those couple of chores that they have, the dishes yeah. and the shoes, they do that at lunchtime when you guys get home. Yep. So it's they still do the chore every day, but it's just a matter of when. But on free days, it's nice. And then 
having, having our, this is, I guess, part of our home prep too. You know, we have our dishwasher every night, we fill it after dinner. And then I set it to run like four hours or five hours later. Yeah. So that all night, whatever extra cups or things that we, that we may make extra yeah. dishes, they still can go in the dishwasher and it will still run that night. So in the morning, the dishes are always clean yep. so that our daughter can put them away so we can spend all day filling the dishwasher back and, up again and, and with dishes. And it is amazing how how two little kids can fill an entire dishwasher. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. But that's part of that's part of what we do and, and her chore helps us to keep that system going. If, exactly. And I think adding more and more chores and more and more responsibility layering that on right i'm looking forward to the time when they can make their own breakfast but right now it's still a little bit of chaos still a little chaos because the little one wants to get in there and do it all and that's really the problem i think the older one can make all the breakfasts but it's just when that little one is with her it gets a little crazy they get they get crazy together it's chaos exactly so once you know we start homeschooling you know it's our normal day we just go into it and we do, and we do our routine and we try to get everything done we run errands we do all the fun things so whether it's a so you may find that you have different types of days through the week and that may require you to have a little bit different morning routines and so you know as you take it away you know as you begin to you know keep things in mind as you begin to think through your morning routine maybe try to refine things try to improve things make sure you maintain a fixed bedtime and wake time that for us for you and i is really really important yeah that's our best advice really yeah. try to whatever that is maybe your whatever kids go to bed super early or maybe your kids are night owls and they don't get up in the morning until nine and that's the way your family works that's great great but trying to keep it somewhat fixed because the problem is when it ends up floating all over the place and we've had this happen a few times where the, the bedtimes start getting all wonky we're not able to prep the way that we need no. to. That means that the next day we're like running to catch up and we, you didn't or get to do your prep like, the night before. Like if if I like, go to bed ugh. too late, I won't, I won't wake up early to go work out. And then all, all day I'm it thinking about cascading. how, how do I get my workout in? How do I get my writing time in? What, what, you know, when do I do that? Because I have already lost by going to bed late. I have lost my successful stuff in the morning and that's exactly already setting me up on a, like I'll absorb what I, I will lose, but I, I tried not to let it impact, you know, their morning routine, but I'm willing to absorb a little bit on my side on the things I want to do. But committing to a repeatable routine, as we've said, even though you may have different types of mornings, like as we disca- described with ours, my routine going into it, basically from when they wake up until, you know, 8.15, it's essentially the same every single day. It's just that after that time period, it's whether we go to our parent partnership or do we stay home and do Mm -hmm. our long homeschooling sessions. You know, for you, you may have different things. You may want to look at your schedule, but try to get something that is repeatable, that is dependable, that is something that your children can, you know, lean on Mm -hmm. on a a busy morning. Well, this is part about knowing to what, you know, what you need and what they need. I think this is yeah. this is a balance of of these two these two spheres, right? Because you have to think about what do you need to be successful for your day? Does that mean that you need to wake up in the morning and have time for a, a two cups of coffee yeah, right. and a full shower before you can feel like a productive human, you know, or maybe you need meditation time in the morning. Maybe you're a person that has to have a solid 8 hours of sleep. If you don't, things aren't going to go well. Exactly. It's like set yourself up for success. And know, knowing your kids too and knowing, gosh, they really seem to do best with this kind of routine. You might have to try a few things, right? You may have to sample and say, well, let's test out this bedtime with this waking time and do these things yeah. in the morning and see how it goes. And then, you know, maybe we're going to, you know, flip flop and try something else. And you might find like, oh gosh, you know, my kids are, my kids really need this much sleep or they need to get to bed by this time. We really find that our kids, um, they wake earlier when they go to bed earlier, but they are happier. Yeah. So um, it's kind of a you know, double-edged yeah. sword because we, we're going to get woken earlier in the morning, which means we've got to adjust when we go to bed, yeah. knowing that they're going to come in. But they do better. And yeah. so, you know, the earlier that you can wake, of course, you have more of a day together. But know yourself and know your kids and what works for you. Yeah. And if you're just one of those families that needs a slow roll in the morning, then then do that. Uh, exactly. I, I totally agree. Also, starting to think a little bit about how do you structure your morning? Do you need to wake up early, right? Do you need to 
carve out some time for yourself. Right. When we talked with Christina Garner from oh, yeah. Blossom she and Root, she says, four in the morning or... she, yeah, she gets up early in the morning to have her own time to yeah. herself. It's, it's and kind so, of like the only way she gets all of her work done, she was talking about. Yeah. That's when she's, she's going to get up and take that time to do her work and get the things done she needs to do so that she's ready to homeschool her kids for the day. And we've heard this from other families. Yeah. We've heard from several families that they, the parents get up early to have their me time, whatever yeah. that is, whether they've got to work or they just well, need time it, to do. It, it could be working out like, uh, like, like what I right. like to do. Maybe it could they, be your writing. Like you could have a hobby that you want to do. You want to get your sewing in. Or it's you wanna, your coffee time. Yeah. Or you <laughs> maybe do some you mind, mindfulness activities. Do you journal? Do you need to do morning yoga? Do you need to do meditation? Right. What, what is that thing that you absolutely need to do? And that's something that I, I like, I want people to think about is like, start to carve out some time for yourself because right. the days are very busy and you know your spouse may be busy may have a busy project that coming up for the next three or four months you know we have a, a set of friends who a friend is um going into a new field and he's having to do all this training and the mother is very busy and she she's not getting as much help as she normally would would get because he's transitioning into a new career and that is you know five months of that could be very stressful and so think about you know what do you need what are right. what are the goals that you have how can you carve out some time i tell you what the days where i can get my workout in and get a quick writing sprint done and get 500 words in the bank and i'm just starting the day those are the best days because i can tell you i don't care what happens for the rest of the day with right. respect because to you me met your own personal i've goals. already met my own personal goals i feel yeah. great i don't feel any stress I feel like, oh, homeschooling's easy. Oh, uh, you know, I roll with the punches, you know, afternoon's wide open. It's totally fun and easy. But, you know, the days where I'm like chasing my goals and chasing what I need to do, like, oh, I got to get my workout in. When can I do that? Oh, I don't know when that's going to happen. Or maybe the afternoon, the, the little one wakes up early from her nap. I lose my, my workout. Now I got to do it in the evening. That cuts into our time. You know, it starts to cascade. You start to get a little bit of frustrated. So, Carving out maybe best for you is to carve out a little bit of personal time early in the morning. Maybe that's what's best for you. Who knows? Yeah, I think that one of the things where I see you get the most frustrated, and, and actually where I get the most frustrated too, yeah. is when I'm trying to see to my needs and the kids' needs simultaneously. Yeah, I and I think that. that's what happens in the morning if you're a person that, like, I need my silence and my morning coffee. I just, you know, that's what you need then you may have to do that earlier than your children wake up. I mean, our children, I don't know about yours, but ours are very loud. Yeah. That is not something that could happen in our house. Yeah. Um, and so I could see even in your face too, when you are struggling to like, I know I have these things I need for me. Maybe you just need a few minutes of quiet or maybe you need a workout mm -hmm. or whatever, but you're also trying to take care of the kids at the same time. That's when you get super upset and frustrated. Yeah. And and so, you know, really set, set yourself up for success. I think that's the overall message of this podcast is set yourself up for success yeah. um, for yourself and for your homeschool each day. Um, another thing that some people like to do is before they go to bed, they like to write down the actions for the next day. I know that's a very um, popular thing to do. Oh, yeah, they, they, they plan their day. They plan their day or even just say, right, say, hey, tomorrow I want to accomplish this or I would like to do this tomorrow and I want to see that I've finished this or this and that. And it could just be written analog right on a piece of paper. Yeah. Paper. Boy, that or, sounds awesome. Or they do like a daily planner. Those are things that some people want to review in the morning. So maybe think about how you carve that out. Um, beyond that, you know, hydration, I think is a big thing. A lot of times we just forget to drink water. Oh, yeah. Biggest thing I do every morning is when the when I've made the breakfast and I've doled them out in between that period where I'm like feeding the dog and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm moving around the kitchen, getting my first like seven, 800 steps of the day um, on my way to 20,000. I make sure I'm, I'm just plowing glasses of water, I'm like one, two, three glasses of water in the morning. Because for me, a lot of times I forget to drink, you know, the night before, and then you sleep all night and you wake up and you've, you've essentially been dry fasting for 12 hours. Right. Yeah. And you really need to hydrate up because sometimes you can feel a little lethargic. Your body's not feeling great. I love to just pound a bunch of water. And it really just kind of like, I feel like I'm like, I wakes me up. Like, I'm like, oh, great. I feel really good now. And I, I can, I can start moving. Yeah. Yeah. We can't forget about that. Cam. And the, another thing is some people, maybe they get sucked into their phones. I, I know a lot of people who may actually put their phone in like a charging box where it's actually closed and they actually don't get to their phone until like nine o'clock in the morning. Right. Maybe you, you need to push yeah. the phone away. It's and hard. Actually, those screens suck us in. They, they really do. But maybe it's something that you need to do is to push the phone away for the first early bit of the morning so that you can get success mm -hmm. and actually accomplish the things, whatever those might be. And, you know, start your day out right before that phone actually hits your hand or hits your pocket, that maybe that is something you need to do. 
Another thing I like to do is I don't like to have any deliverables in the morning. Like, oh, I've got to make sure I get this out the door at 7.30. Now we all know that like, oh, work-wise, of course, um, we have our chores and all that type of stuff. But I don't like to actually have something where I have to like deliver something at seven in the morning or seven thirty in the morning. Obviously, if we have businesses that we're running on the side and things like that, obviously we got to do that. But I don't like to have anything where I, like I got to fire off emails at seven in the morning or seven thirty to like my private you know hobby group. Or that it's I'm like working. oh, there's yeah. a there's a uh, a form that we have to fill out for school exactly for for the parent partnership the next day. We're not going to fill it out in the morning. Yeah. We're going to fill it out the night before. It could be something as simple as that because that's going to stress you out when you didn't remember to do it and yeah. you've got to fill this thing out at or the last Or you're going to walk minute. out the door and you forgot to do that thing. Right, yeah. I always try to like, yeah, we always try to bring that up to the night before and yeah. get all those things exactly. done and staged so that I don't have to remember, oh yeah, I got to sign that paperwork the, tomorrow morning. Right. It can be something that's really simple and yeah. silly, but we try to think about that early. Yeah. So, and then the last thing is don't, as, as Ariel said earlier, don't be afraid to change things and try new things. Um, especially if you're trying to develop new hobby, new habits, and you're trying to change how you're, maybe you're trying to change who you are, right? I want to wake up a little bit earlier. I want to, I want to push my wake up from 7.30 to 7 o'clock, right? Little incremental changes. Don't be afraid to change things. Maybe you see one kid is not responding as well to the morning routine. Maybe you can ask them how you can improve it and maybe make that change. I think involving your kids, depending on the age of your kids, if your kids are older, asking them what they need in the morning. You know, for our daughter, our older daughter, she can definitely articulate. She needs um, a little bit of cuddle with mom. She needs to get like her emotions grounded for the day. She's a slower roller than our little one. Yep. And then she wants to... Our little one's like a firecracker, man. She wakes up and it's like, I'm at 100%. Let's go. Right. Our little one wants to eat breakfast as quickly as humanly possible. But our older (laughs) one, she really wants to kind of like slowly eat her breakfast while she yeah. works that works better for her she likes that she doesn't want to she doesn't like to wake up and, and gobble down food the funny thing is she doesn't eat as much i actually feed the little one more food in the morning than the big one right because the big one just she doesn't like she doesn't eat like to eat a lot yeah. right away yeah so she's she kind of ro- rolls a little slower that way and that's what works for her yeah. um, so you know talk with your kids involve them in the routine planning um, if you feel like your days are kind of being chaotic and you don't have a morning routine plan you know think about creating one and, and don't be afraid to change it certainly but um, you know make something that might work for you let us know we would love to hear yeah. about your morning, morning routines. routines maybe yeah. we'll post something on the podcast Facebook group if yep. you haven't joined definitely join that um and well let's talk about morning routines what are your ideas i'd love to hear what other families do that's one of the things we had a whole series of morning routine interviews that we did the first year of the podcast there were homeschool journey little like uh addendums and we'll link those in the show notes because those were really fun and we talked to five different families about what they did in the morning Mm -hmm. and everybody's was a little bit different but find what your needs are and your kids needs are and then optimize your day to set yourself up for success Yeah, this is a very unique thing Uh, your your routine may look like a lot of other people's routines but it's always going to be unique to your family and, and your situation so right absolutely. and it will change over time and, and and if anyone's out there doing cold plunges make sure you comment in there as well i don't even know what this is. i don't think i want to know what this is i think you want to know i don't think I want to know. anyway we're going to end this the way we always ended and what we are reading our, our oldest is now into the narnia series and we are oh, yeah she started with the magician's nephew, nephew and she i'm not sure that she understand quite understood quite all of it uh you know that's like a kid's book but it's deeper a little, a little bit deeper on that one so we'll see um, there's a lot of metaphors and things in yeah, that she, she she seemed to enjoy it she plowed right through it audio book wise i believe it was about four and a half hours long so it's it not too bad it was not too bad i think you know with her and her quiet time that that equates to about three days worth of listening she plowed right through it moved right on she really liked it um she asked me for the next book and that's lion and witch in the wardrobe isn't it the horse and his boy isn't that the next one i don't know that's I thought the pull. horse and his boy was the second one. Lion, the Witch, and the Order was the third one. I'm going with what Libby recommended as book number two. Now I'm going to have to look it up, but I I really kind of think that the that the second or one of them is the horse and his boy. There's the horse and his boy. I thought that might have been the last one. Yes. So according to NarniaWeb.com, Ooh, no, all we're, right, real time sourcing. This is better than Chat GPT. So the publication this order was Lion the <laughs> was the Lion the Witch in the Wardrobe first. You're right, but the chronological order is the Magician's Nephew, then the Lion the Witch in the Wardrobe, and then the Horse and His Boy before you get to Prince Caspian. Got it. Voyage of the Dawn Treader, Silver Chair, Last Battle. Well, I'm glad you. We have the official the official reading order. 
We do. We do. It's sort of like the uh, the the Star Wars viewing order. Like, how do you view all the <laughs> movies in order, like so that they all make all they all make sense? This is a really interesting. Um, this is a really interesting series because I remember reading it as a kid and totally not getting any of the mythology stuff behind yeah. it. Um, and so it'll be very interesting for her to read this as a younger person and just see it for a fantasy story, and then read it, you know, as a middle middle school reader, mm-hmm. and then we can talk about symbolism that was put in different mythologies and stuff yep. and it, it'll be really cool it will be yeah so c.s lewis's uh, uh the magician's nephew is uh, the book that we are well our daughter is reading this week it's it's fun we're starting to get to the point where she's like oh yeah she's reading books and you know this yeah is what she's and then enjoying. she tells us hey i need the next one that was really good yeah so I, like I, oh okay I, I take it as a, a as a as the thumbs up you know yeah we're not getting that that time to like do the critical thinking questions and stuff because she's doing it on her own Mm -hmm. but her vocabulary has gone so through the roof and i know that she'd be fine if we picked up the book and read it to her we could have a more but you're you're right now reading kin is from our our previous podcast we talked about you're still reading kin so um, yeah it's like 600 pages i'll be reading it for a while you'll be reading for a long time (laughs) thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time. Happy homeschooling!